What's up everyone and thank you for stopping by the channel. Today's project is this Poland Pro mower and the problem is that it simply will not start. Let's take a good look at it find out what's wrong with it and hopefully we can fix it. In this video we try and repair this mower however it may not be the exact repair you need to make to yours. We'll explore other options later in the video. So we do have some information on this mower, but I'm not going to tell you about it till later in the video. The reason is because we're going to take the worst case scenario, which is of course not knowing anything about the equipment you're about to work on. Besides, some of the information you get might be wrong and lead you in the wrong direction. The first thing we want to do is inspect the mower for any obvious problems or issues. The first thing we see is a lot of oil coming out of the muffler and puddling on the lower part of the deck. This could mean there's way too much oil in the engine which might also keep the spark plug from working and cause the engine not to start. Now after cleaning the dipstick and putting it back into the engine, what we see is some of the dirtiest oil I've ever seen but the worst part is that it's just above the full mark and that's not enough to make the oil come out of the muffler so this isn't the reason why the engine won't start. Next I want to examine the gas in the tank for anything obvious but what I see is about half a tank of gas and there doesn't appear to be any water at the bottom of the tank so next I want to try starting the engine and see what it does and doesn't do. Now as I'm pressing the primer bulb I can hear the gas being injected into the engine with each press so I know that's working like it should. Unfortunately the engine did not start but we already knew that. What we did figure out is that it didn't even try and start. The next thing I want to do is use my spark checker to ensure that the ignition system is working. You can buy these online for a few dollars and to use it simply install it in line with the spark plug and pull the rope a few times and watch for an orange glow in the tester. Once we confirm that we have spark I'll then use my compression tester to make sure that the engine isn't worn out to a point that it won't start. You can find these online for less than $20 and to use it install it into the spark plug hole and pull the rope several times to get a pressure reading. We want a reading well over 100 psi and the higher the better. Anything lower than that it just means the engine is worn out to some extent. We do not want to see a reading lower than 50 psi though. So there was an orange glow from the tester and that means we do have spark. If you did not see a glow from your tester then you could have a bad ignition module or your kill switch might still be grounded when it's not supposed to be. Next I'll remove the spark plug so we can install the compression tester. This is when I noticed something really strange. First off the spark plug looks to be cleaner than normal so it might have just been replaced and the second thing is on this type of engine the spark plug is supposed to be very short but the spark plug has way more threads than normal. So this is an NGK spark plug that you might find on a Honda engine. The design of that engine requires more threads on its spark plug but on this style of engine it doesn't require that many threads. That means this is the wrong spark plug for this engine. In fact if you look at the ground strap it looks to be bent so that means that the plug actually bottomed out against the engine. This could be the reason why this engine isn't starting. Now for comparison this is the correct spark plug and as you can see there's a drastic difference when it comes to the amount of threads this engine requires. So the reading is 74 psi which sounds pretty bad however the engine could have a compression release making it easier to pull the rope but also giving us a lower than normal reading. Now to get a true reading I would have to use a drill to turn the engine over at a higher speed. Now I'd still prefer a reading over 100 psi though. Now since we have the correct spark plug in the engine I want to try and start the engine again and hopefully it starts and runs this time. So unfortunately it still didn't start. Also there aren't very many things left to check as to why this engine isn't starting so I'm getting a little worried here. Now on this style of engine the air filter has a good chance of getting clogged. If it was clogged with dirt then the engine wouldn't get enough air to mix with the gas and that would explain why this engine isn't starting. As you might expect the openings for the foam filter are completely clogged with dirt. This is probably why the engine isn't starting. I'll just remove the foam filter from the air box, wash the dirt away and let it dry. Now we can test to see if this was the problem by just trying to start the engine without the clogged air filter. If it starts then you know it was the problem.
So yet again, it still didn't start. Now I'm beginning to second guess if there's something I'm missing. This time, I'm going to drain the gas out of the tank and examine it close up for any issues, no matter how small they might be. If you're curious, I'm using this bottle to create a vacuum that will start the siphoning process. The darker the color, the older the gas is, and so far, the color shows that this gas does have some age to it, but it's not excessive. There's some grass clippings in the gas, but that'll get filtered by the pickup tube on the carburetor, so that's not a real problem. Also, as confirmed earlier, there's no water at the bottom of the cup either. The only thing I haven't done is physically prime the carb with my own gas, so I guess I'll give that a shot. So we finally got the engine to start and run. That means there's something wrong with the gas that was in it, even though there doesn't appear to be anything wrong with it. The last thing to do is to put some of my own fresh ethanol-free gas in the tank and try starting it. If it runs, then it will confirm that the gas that was in it was the problem. Now, some of the old gas might still be in the well inside the tank, so I'll try and start it again and see if we can get some of that fresh gas inside the well so the carb can deliver it to the engine. So the engine started right up and it actually sounds really healthy. This also confirms that the gas in the tank was the problem. Now as the engine got hotter, the oil that was in the muffler started to burn off and the smoke had a very familiar smell. It smelled a lot like the exhaust from a bus or a semi truck. If you hadn't figured it out already, someone put diesel fuel into the gas tank and that's the reason why it wouldn't start. What looked like oil coming out of the muffler was actually diesel cleaning the carbon from the engine and collecting in the muffler because it wasn't burning inside the engine. I've never seen this happen before, but I guess just like the wrong spark plug, mistakes do happen. After replacing the air filter, I'll run the engine some more to get it hot so we can do an oil change. Now after a few minutes of running, the smoke isn't as bad as it was before, but it will take the next mowing before the muffler is able to burn off all that diesel that's remaining in it. Another reason why this mower might not be starting is that the mower hit something hard like a buried post and sheared the key on the flywheel. Now the ignition timing is based on some magnets embedded in the flywheel and if the key shears, the timing will be off and the engine might not start depending on how badly the key is sheared. To fix it, you need to remove the damaged key and replace it with a new one. Now this oil change is also something special as well. I've never seen oil act this way while being drained. In fact, even though the oil was hot, it should have just poured out of the filler neck, but as you can see, the flow is rather erratic. For the sake of time, I had to speed up this part of the video by 35%, but in real time, the oil took an astonishing 1 minute and 30 seconds to drain just 18 or so ounces of oil. I can't even imagine how much sludge might be at the bottom of this engine. I have to wonder if this is probably the first oil change this engine has ever seen since it was new. Well, it looks like the engine wasn't damaged from the use of diesel, but it was certainly a test of my patience in diagnosing it. Now, after the oil change, cleaning the air filter, and sharpening the blade, it's now ready for the rest of the mowing season. And as far as the information about this mower that I didn't mention earlier, well, the owner was using it and it ran out of gas. They then found some gas in the garage, put just enough in so they could finish mowing the yard, and after starting it, it started and ran for a few seconds and it died and it wouldn't start again. So I hate to say it, that information would have been helpful, but in the end, it just took a little bit more time to figure out. So my question is, have you ever heard of someone putting in diesel into a mower or some other type of power equipment before? Personally, this is the first for me, and hopefully this will be my only time as I simply can't see this happening very often. 
Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions, and I hope to see you in the next video.